Hey guys, dry out yet? Um, big week, looking forward to going out to Indiana. Um, I've had a chance to watch them now some last night and today. Um, you know, they have a good football team. You look at the, the four teams they've lost to, combined they've lost three games the whole season. So, I mean, you look at the way they, they played University of Michigan, um, you look at the way they played against Ohio State, Louisville. I mean, they're, they're a good football team that has come up short a little bit. You know, I, I just read where Coach Allen said they're going to settle on one quarterback and stick with him. So um, there's some things that we're not sure of. There's some things that we know we have to get ready for, and, uh, and we're going to do that. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. The quarterback situation. What do you see from those those two guys on the film that they've been kind of rotating through? Well, they're both really good players. Um, they both can throw it very well. They're both athletic. Um, I don't know. It's going to be a challenge. Whoever lines up back there, but knowing well, you know who starts the game, that'll be the guy. Then we just got to be ready for both. A bit of a similar situation as you guys were last year in the sense of rotating quarterbacks. They fired their offensive coordinator at the bye week. What do you remember? What were the challenges of that experience that you remember from last year? And is there anything that you could take from that experience to your advantage this week, game playing against them? No, I think every situation's totally unique and totally different. And without being there, I have no idea what their situation is. So, um, no, I really don't think I can. Our Tom Winung guy is leading the Big Ten in rushing. Was that? Did you expect that coming into the season, or is that a little bit of a surprise to you? Well, it's not a surprise that he's doing well. I mean, you never know how it's going to pan out, right? But I think what Kyle is a great represent, representation of is this is his fourth year in the program. He's developed year after year. He's gotten stronger. He's gotten better as a football player. He's matured. And now he's a, you know, he's a grown man playing running back, you know, and I look back at over the history of the program, whether it was Ray Rice or it was Brian Leonard or it was Pop, you know, very, very aggressive physical backs, downhill backs that run violently. And he fits, you know, right into that category of guys that as they developed became more and more violent downhill runners. Um, Coach, I know you've had some different looks uh, on the offensive line in terms of personnel as the season has gone on. What do you make of how that group has been able to sort of get into a rhythm you know, with those changes and just how they've progressed uh, as the season has gone on? I don't know if the rhythm has anything to do with it. I think what's happening is cumulative repetitions is starting to take a hold, and we're getting better. It's slow progress, but we are getting better. And as I've said, it's just got to continue. And there's some guys that are right on the cusp behind them, you know, young guys that are figuring out how to play. So uh, it's definitely arrow up, but it's, it's not as fast as I'd like it to be. But, you know, that's life. What kind of uh, progress or maybe a step of maturity have you seen with this team in the way that in a, in a game maybe things aren't going a certain the way that you want it to? It looks like things are getting out of control, but they're kind of able to put the brakes on and get back onto, on track. I mean, because last season, obviously, sometimes things had a tendency to spiral a little bit. But it seems yeah, like I think it's leadership. I think the leadership, uh, again, they keep talking about it, and I don't want to bore you, but it's, it's that pipeline. And now we have more guys towards the back end of the pipeline that have been in the program for three and a half years, understand the culture inside out, have paid the price, you know, off season, spring, summer, and then in season. And the cumulative effect, those cumulative repetitions, not only of game reps and practice reps, but the winter program and all those things that make you mentally tougher, physically stronger. Um, so when, when push comes to shove, those guys got to lead the program, right? There's a bunch of young guys that, that are playing out there. They don't know. So who do they follow? They follow the leaders. And uh, we, we have some guys right now that I'm really encouraged when our guys follow them. I know the answer to this question is probably chop. But coming off an emotional week and just getting the team to focus, how do you do that just given everything that went into Saturday's game? Uh, you throw the you throw the Indiana tape on all three phases, and that gets your attention in a hurry. You know, you look at first off, Tom Allen is an excellent football coach. I've known Tom for a while now. He's he's a great coach. He's a great person in his program. Um, you know, I I know Rod Carey, who's now the offensive coordinator, is an excellent coach. 
The line coach, Bob Bostad, was my line coach down in Tampa. So uh, they're a well-coached football team. You know, Tom, Tom's so heavily involved in the defense, and you can see it. Um, you know, it's just they make you really check every box in your preparation because they bring pressure from everywhere. They bring line movements that are hard to block. They rush secondary guys, uh, you know, and they have good players. Like their D-line is a unique. Seven of the eight too deep are transfer guys. And, you know, you look at it and you say, well, when I heard that, I read it before I always read the write-up, before I throw the tape on, I read the write-up. I expected to see a disjointed group, you know, all that just came together. Far from it. They look like they've been coached by the same coach for a long time. They all play with pad level. They're stout. Um, then, you know, um, Casey, 44, he's one of the, you know, he's one of the top five linebackers in the, in the league. You know, how do you rank him? There's a lot of good linebackers, including ours, in this league. But uh, he's really good. He's strong. He's fast. He's tough, instinctual. And then the secondary has a bunch of first-year starters, but they are playing well together. Uh, whoever Whoever's coaching that group is doing a great job. I, I'm not that familiar with exactly how their staff works, but I think it all comes back to Coach Allen. He runs that defense, and, and uh, I've seen him. When I was d at, down in Tampa, he was down at South Florida, and I was uh, I was doing TV at the time, and I went over to watch one of their practices, and I didn't know Tom Allen from a hole in the wall, and I just watched him coach. I said, that guy, he's he's really good. You could see it back then, and it would have been 2014. Uh, it was the first time I saw him. But, um, yeah, the, and then offensively, Rod Carey, you know, he's a seasoned coach, been a head coach at two different places, and uh, he's an Indiana guy, Indiana grad. Um, you can see already in just one game, they had a bye week in one game, but you can see some of the stuff he used to do at Northern Illinois, some of the stuff at Temple. Um, and, you know, it's mid-season, so how much are you really going to be able to change? But you can see his influence. So, so uh, again, I think uh, player-wise, their center is number 50, is a really good player. Um, the receiver, number six, I think his name's K Camper. Yeah, it is Camper. He, he, he really catches your eye when you're watching him. And then their old quarterback, McCulley, number one, is playing wide out, and he's a big athlete. So there's a lot of things that you have to defend offensively, schematically, and then personnel-wise. So how do you get their attention? Throw that tape on and point those things out and say, look, we're going on the road, and it's going to be a challenge. You go on the road in the Big Ten, right, and uh, against a good, well-coached, talented football team, we, we got our hands full. And... Uh, we're going to have to have a great week of preparation because they, they do challenge you many ways schematically as well as physically. Coach, um, your team so far this year has uh, outscored opponents 79 to 34 in the fourth quarter. What do you think the key is to having those kinds of strong finishes to games so far? You know, I, I think you can, you can draw anything you want, you know, so you can write the story or whatever you want. I don't know that that ever adds up to are we in better shape than the other guys? I think every game takes on a life of its own. I've told you that guy. I've told you guys that. And you know, it just seems like some of our games have taken on that, that story. But the guys who are making that story happen are our players. So I'm proud of them being able to do that. But that means nothing in this Indiana season, right? All, all it can do is it can mean confidence that we've done it before. But it doesn't mean it's going to happen again. You have to go make it happen again. And that's one of the things, you know, to your point is – you have to chop this moment. We have an opportunity to go to Indiana and be 1-0 and at the end of that, that Indiana season. And we have to stay focused on that all week. We have to stay focused when we get on that plane to go out there and throughout until we get back on that plane. Playing at a high level all season, week in and week out. I mean, how big has his return been for this defense? And just kind of what have you seen from the way he's been able to do this consistently? I, I think Mo's doing a great job, just like uh, you said. And I think what it does is it gives us real depth at the linebacker position. You know, instead of guys playing 70, 80, 90 plays, they're playing 50, 48, 52. And they're splitting those reps. And over time, that adds up. You know, we're, we're playing our eighth straight week. Now, the two teams we just played had buys before us. This team had a buy a week ago. And we're going on our eighth straight week. If you don't have depth like that, uh, I think those, you know, that week after week takes its toll. I think it still is taking its toll, but uh, that helps for sure. 
for the majority of the time that the Big Ten East has been a thing, uh, it seems like it's been Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, and then the rest of the division. Do you view games against teams like Indiana, Michigan State, Maryland as an opportunity of you know establishing the pecking order, put, having Rutgers climb up the hierarchy of the division? Do you view that at all as an opportunity to uh, elevate Rutgers in, in that sense against the rest of the division? I don't think of any of it that way. I think about can we win this game? I think all those things. I think your job as a reporter is to think of that stuff, and I think it's great because that's what you, you do. If I get caught up in that stuff, I'm focusing on the wrong things. If I let my team get caught up in that, I think we're focusing on the wrong things because we can't control anybody else. But what we can control is how hard we work, how disciplined we live, how we study, all those things, how we take care of our academics, you know, what kind of people we are on and off the field. Like that, to me, is what we have to focus on. And I think the rest takes care of itself. And that's just the only way I've ever done things. Um, again, I've said it to you, and you may think I'm you know, downplaying it, but I think if you think of things the other way, it gets too big. It's too much of a, a burden. I mean, if you just keep it simple, and you know, this is what we got to do right now, I think it helps everybody involved. You switched uh, your punt returner after Rashad Rochelle muffed that punt, put in Christian Dremel. What are you doing to uh, about who will be your punt returner? I guess uh, this week. If I'm not. I'm not ready to decide that yet. Yeah, I, I definitely. We we're discussing it as a staff. We'll look at it during the week, but I, I I don't know the answer to that right now. I'm surprised you knew it was Christian Dremel with number 47, right? You had to do a little ID ID work. Yeah. That's a pain in the rear end, having to make keep track of everybody who's duplicate numbers. But that's the way of the world these days. What was your conversation like with Tyreem after the game and given everything he went through in the first half and just keeping him and getting him on track with you know, having to bounce back? Yeah, I felt bad for him. The only thing I told him is, hey, at least it was in the first half, dude, so you were able to start you know, right away at, at Indiana. Uh, but yeah, I did. I felt, I felt bad for him. Um, it's tough. I mean, those are the rules. You just got to play by within the rules. So it's, uh, it's a good, good lesson, I guess, for everybody. We'll, we'll, we talk about it. We show it. And you just got to gotta make sure that you leave it beyond a shadow of a doubt. So that's what we try to do. Some things are unavoidable, though. I think, you know, sometimes you get into a situation. It's just an unfortunate situation. And, uh, but Tyreen will be back, and he'll be ready to roll. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.